Greetings fellow gamers, I'm the Soulsborne Seeker and today I'll be reviewing Gestalt, Stim and Cinder, an action-adventure metroidvania game with RPG elements, developed by Metamorphosis Games and released on the 16th of July 2024 for PC. Gestalt, Stim and Cinder transpires in the gritty steampunk setting of Canaan, a sprawling city that is still plagued by the echoes of a past cataclysmic event known as the Calamity, a catastrophe during which a gate to a dreadful realm known as the Abyss opened, through which demons flooded the land. In order to fight back against the fiendish hordes, the people tried to harness the power of the Abyss, infusing its energy into powerful armors donned by a group of warriors called the Achaeans, who managed to push back the abominations and seal the gate. However, the demonic energy of the Abyss proved too powerful for the Achaeans, tainting them one by one until, eventually, they rose against humanity under the leadership of the Betrayer. Thankfully, one Achaean warrior retained his senses and managed to take down the Betrayer, with the rest of the warriors being stripped of their armors and exiled into the wasteland the world had become. With the realm saved by the demons but left in ruins, humans erected Canaan, a grand city of steam and metal within which they proliferated. But the exiled Achaeans still burned with a vengeance, waiting and biding their time to claim the land and shape it as they saw fit. You step into the boots of Alethea, a member of an elite group of mercenaries called Soldners, who finds herself intertwined in the animosity between the humans and the Achaeans after a mission goes wrong and starts dredging up the world world's history. I have to admit the game's story was a pleasant surprise, featuring quite a few unexpected twists and turns and filled with well-realized characters who had their own personalities and motivations, all of them shaped by their past experiences which now guided their actions for what each one considers to be the greater good. The narrative is mainly presented through cutscenes and dialogue, which do a great job at fleshing out the setting and giving you bits and pieces of the overarching lore, which I must admit goes quite deep with its world building. One thing I need to mention here is that the game can be quite dialogue heavy, especially during its first couple of hours. I personally didn't mind that, but I can understand that this can be perceived as a negative for others, so it is worth mentioning, though I will also say that you can skip through dialogue quite fast by mashing the corresponding button that moves it forward. Thus, if you're interested in the story, you can read through the conversations, but if you just wish to delve right into the action, there's that choice as well. The only blemishes to mention here are some rare typos and even more rare instances of missing words when it comes to dialogue, but those are easily fixed and don't really take away from the experience. Speaking about setting, the city of Canaan is one of the most visually stunning works of pixel art I have ever witnessed, and does an excellent job of essentially being a character of its own, with each of its incredibly diverse biomes contributing to the plot through environmental storytelling. From the mechanized city of Irkala to the black market and beyond, each place being a delight to traverse and explore. Speaking about exploration, the map of Gestalt features a good number of secrets to uncover most of which are well worth your while since they provide ample opportunities to upgrade and strengthen your character. In terms of collectibles, they are mainly divided into four categories, those being ability points, chests, corgis, and quest or side quest items. Ability points exist within Tesla orbs that you need to break with your gun, and are utilized in order to upgrade your character through an expansive skill tree which I will explain in more detail later. Chests mainly include consumables, which are items that you can use once in order to get a corresponding benefit, such as antidotes to heal poison or food that increases your battle prowess, though some of the more rare boxes will provide accessories and crafting items. Orgies are dogs that have been lost across the map, which you need to find and send back to the main city for a grand prize, and finally, quest and side quest items are objects necessary to complete the aforementioned quests and side quests, which can yield a variety of different rewards, from scrap, which is the game's main currency, to ability points, all the way to allowing merchants to craft new purchasable items for you. Said quests are separated into two types, one being the traditional fetch quests and the other being bounties, which require of you to kill a certain number of enemies for a reward. In true Metroidvania fashion, many of these items will initially be inaccessible to you and will require the acquisition of new abilities to reach them, with said abilities being classics from the genre, such as the double jump, dash, and wall shatter. Thankfully, the game makes it easy for you to locate said objects through its marking system, which essentially allows you to purchase certain maps from a merchant once they become available to him, which jot down the positions of each collectible on the overview map, from corgis to ability points all the way to chests. There's also a handy fast travel system that becomes available about 2 hours into the game, for you to quickly move around biomes and save yourself some valuable time. Now, while I did enjoy the exploration of the game immensely, there are a few things to mention here that could have been better. For starters, I would have liked a bit more variety in the side quests, since, as I said, they consist of fetch quests and bounties which are very basic 
basic in design, though quite rewarding to complete. The game can also be considered linear for a good part of it. Though backtracking is very much necessary for you to go for 100% completion and there are certain biomes that can demonstrate some complexity, such as the forest one with its vertical sections and platforming challenges, others can feel more straightforward with the story essentially leading you from one area to the next. Platforming could also have benefited from some extra difficulty since, even though there are a few sections that require some acrobatic skill, for the most part these trials were easy to overcome. Finally, I'll admit that I didn't really find much use for the items I found inside basic chests, with the exception of the antidote, which came in quite handy. Moving on to combat, the game goes for a fast-paced approach, offering both melee and ranged options and doing an incredible job of placing you in situations that encourage the use of them at the same time. Melee-wise, Alethea is equipped with a powerful sword that allows you to get close and personal and make mincemeat out of your enemies, while your ranged attacks are carried out with a gun which has a limited amount of ammo that can be restocked by drawing energy either by attacking enemies or finding certain Tesla coils on the map. Battle is easy to learn and master and can make you feel like an unstoppable killing machine once you get the hang of it as you dodge roll, evade and retaliate against your foes, both biological and mechanized. There's a good variety in terms of enemies, from melee brawlers to gunslingers and flying robots, all the way to zombie dogs and hostile flora, each boasting different fighting tactics that will require quick thinking when clashing against them. Your combat prowess is further enhanced by the existence of a skill tree which features mainly passive upgrades that can be purchased via the use of ability points, which you gain either by leveling up or by discovering them across the map. Aside from that, there is also a variety of different accessories to find and equip, each one providing different advantages and sometimes disadvantages, such as increased blade and gun damage or losing some defense in exchange for more health, further making your life easier when facing off against minions and bosses alike. There is also a healing mechanic implemented here in the form of potions that you carry around, which are then replenished at save points and whose number can be increased permanently with the help of a certain merchant. On the topic of bosses, Gestalt, Stim and Cinder does a great job of throwing at you some truly visually impressive big bads, all of whom have a very nice repertoire of movesets that make each one distinctive from the other. I particularly enjoyed the fact that every villain was ingrained in the game's lore and story, which further elevated the narrative. However, there was a major issue in this particular regard, and that has to do with difficulty. In terms of difficulty, I was kind of disappointed to find out that the game became progressively easier the more I continued my playthrough, until eventually it had become nearly impossible for me to die and I ended up completely obliterating the bosses almost without a sweat. The only boss that took me a bit of time to finish off was one in the latter parts of the game, whose fight was simply tedious since damage played no importance and it was all about positioning and repeating an attack pattern that took him down quite slowly, with said boss fight also being the sourest part of the gameplay experience for me. There are also no difficulty settings to make the game harder, meaning the default challenge is the one you will have to play with, something I consider a missed opportunity. Lengthwise, it took me 8 hours hours and 15 minutes to complete Gestalt, Steam and Cinder with 100% completion rate. For a price of about 20 bucks, I'd say it's not a bad exchange for the fun it provides. In conclusion, I truly enjoyed my time with Gestalt, Steam and Cinder. I adored the story, lore and steampunk setting, I thought the characters were well written, I loved the combat and exploration and thought the boss fights were beautifully designed and implemented. The game could have used a bit more variety in its quest and side quest system, better platforming segments, less linearity at times and a more balanced difficulty to make sure it provided a consistent challenge, but even with those downsides it was an incredibly engaging experience that kept me hooked until I had explored every nook and cranny of its world. My final verdict on Gestalt, Steam and Cinder is 8 out of 10. What did you think about Gestalt, Steam and Cinder? Have you played it yet? Do you agree with the points I mentioned or do you see things differently? Let me know in the comments below and please subscribe if you enjoyed this video. As always, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, Soulsborne Seeker out!